Uh, we start with Newcastle, and Unai Emery has confirmed he has been approached about the vacant manager's job, but says he is yet to receive an official offer. The former Arsenal and current Villarreal manager is the favourite to succeed Steve Bruce at St James's Park. He received, he has transmitted an interest, and an interest that has not been fragmented in anything else. Que ni, ni ha recibido una oferta, ni se ha concretado nada más, en el que se haga pensar de que, de que me voy a ir. Y tengo mucho respeto a los, al, al club, tengo mucho respeto a los jugadores y tengo una lealtad y, y un respeto máximo a, a la familia Roch. No hay nada más que ese interés y desde ese interés, pues eh, si se concretase alguna cosa más, lo hablaría lo primero con la familia Roche, pero yo sigo a, al momento de hoy pensando en el Villarreal y trabajando para el Villarreal. Well, in addition to that, Emery told uh, Spanish television if an offer arrives before saying yes or no, I would talk to Villarreal after consulting them. If a decision was made, I could go in any direction as long as some requisites are fulfilled. Well, Villarreal's president, Fernando Roig, then also revealed there hadn't been an offer for Emery from any club, saying Emery is very happy in Villarreal. He's under contract. It's not a club decision. Uh, and when it's not a club decision, I say that the contracts must be honoured. We have no offer and there was no contact with other clubs about our manager. So there we go. That's where we are as far as Villarreal is concerned. Let's get the uh, latest on this story from the Newcastle end. Keith Downey, as always, is on patrol. Keith, very good morning to you. There's reports this deal isn't that straightforward. What do you know? Yeah, Rob, it's looking a little bit messy this morning, uh, isn't it? We were reporting yesterday, we were confident that uh, Unai Emery would take this position. We said that talks had taken place at the tail end of, of the weekend. And I must say, even until post-match last night, when we heard those comments from Emery, which we've just ran there, where he didn't rule it out, uh, and he, he, he admitted that there had been some, in, some interest, but no offer yet. It looked as though this deal was still alive. But the reports have emerged in Spain since then that he's decided not to take this job. Now, it's my understanding that he has reservations over the, the job. I don't think it's quite at that stage yet. But we obviously have to be aware of those reports from Spain as well. It's a pretty delicate situation, this one. Newcastle United do want him to be their new manager. Those talks, as I say, were or did take place at the tail end of the weekend. They are willing to pay the €6 million Euro compensation uh, or buyout clause to get him out of that deal. It's my understanding that they were confident of getting their man. He is their number one target and remains so. But despite all of this, they have spoken um, about others. They have spoken to other candidates over the last few weeks. We've mentioned Paulo Fonseca for the best part of two weeks. Roberto Martinez is another, and Eddie Howe. So they have spoken to a number of candidates. But I think after that, it then became clear that Emery was their number one. I think they were of the belief that he would take this role. The reports from Spain are beginning to look, make this look a little bit messy. I think until we get any clarification from the Newcastle end, it's kind of difficult to make an exact decision as to where this is going. But I have to say, the more reports that come out of Spain that say that he is set to turn it down or he doesn't want the role, it does make it look a little bit difficult for Newcastle, this. And it's, it's not a good look because obviously they will have wanted to make that first appointment a good one. They will have wanted to make it um, clear and incisive. That obviously hasn't, that hasn't happened or it looks as though it's not going to happen. So it's a bit of a bloody nose for the, the new owners. I, I do think these things do change. I mean, it's changed a lot in the last 24 hours since we spoke yesterday. I don't think it's the end of it just yet, but it's a really difficult situation for, for Newcastle and their new owners, who I think were confident of getting their man, but are looking like the reports in Spain uh, are making it look as though Unai Emery will not be joining the club. But I think until we get that clarification, certainly from the, the Newcastle end, I would say the deal isn't dead yet and they will hope that they can resurrect it and still have him here taking over at St James's Park. Remember, this job, whoever is going to become the, the new manager here moving forward will have a huge task and although we have been reporting that he does have reservations about the project, it certainly is a big project. He needs to keep them in the Premier League this season 
and then build into next season. Remember, they won last night and they won last night, of course, in the Champions League. 2-0 win, taking them joint top of their Champions League group. It would be a big decision for Unai Emery to go from Champions League football to battling relegation at the bottom of the, the Premier League. So let's see what today um, entails, but it's a, it's a pretty delicate situation for everyone concerned at the moment. OK, Keith, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Right, that's the uh, view from Newcastle. Let's get the view from all the way from Weatherby to Istanbul this morning. Very good morning to Eddie and to Steve. <laughs> Lovely to see you both. Eddie, let's, let's come to you first of all. Um, uh, Newcastle are getting a, bloody, a bit of a bloody nose, said Keith Downey there. Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit of a mess, delicate situation. It's not as plain sailing as the Newcastle's new owners would have liked, is it? No, for sure. Uh, the problem is when you when you come in with a high-profile uh, takeover and, and there's a lot of uh, scrutiny on the club, all eyes on the club, and uh, <coughs> uh, going and getting a new manager under them circumstances makes it makes it very difficult. Um, uh, as as explained already, he's in he's in a Champions League team. Uh, they're, they're, they're very successful in how they go about business. Um, it's well it's well known how they do their business, and uh, he's very comfortable in his position. To to, to go from there to Newcastle and, uh, and and go into a position where he's going to have to fight. Yes, he's good. We know he's going to get a lot of money, but in the meantime, uh, he, he needs results straight away. So it's good. It's it's not as easy as everyone thinks it is. Yeah. Um, Steve, very good morning to you as well. Um, when, um, when managers, when clubs go after a manager, they do their due diligence and, and it, it would be the other way around when a manager goes into a club, wouldn't it, Steve? So if you are Unai Emery or whoever, what factors are you looking at in deciding whether or not to take an appointment? I think you've got to look at um, immediate uh, how they actually do business with you, uh, how they conduct themselves, how they approach you. Um, obviously, talks behind the scenes, what's the vision, um, how are you going to achieve that, what's the kind of funds that I've got, and what is my job. And then you look at the football club, and is it in a position where you can actually start the rebuild? And to start the rebuild from when you're in the bottom three, you will have looked at the team very, very closely. And he will have judged um, what that will take to get out of the bottom three because they can't afford to go down. And if there's a risk of that, then nobody will touch it. Uh, you, you can't go near the job. So I think he's looked at it. It's too big a job. I think Unai Emery is the perfect man for Newcastle. Maybe not this time, but maybe when they're in a more stable position in the Premier League. Uh, but for the moment, I think Newcastle needs somebody who galvanise the squad, the fans, the club, get them out of trouble, make sure they're in the Premier League next season. Eddie, um, what, what Newcastle don't want to fall into the trap of is, is, is to, to go the way that Tottenham did over the summer, have a very high profile pursuit of someone and then someone and then someone and then eventually get a manager in that the, the fit wasn't quite right. How do they avoid this? It's very difficult. Uh, as Steve has rightly said, you know, uh, all these managers that are in good positions at this present moment in time, would they give up their position to go into a team that is threatened with relegation? It's a uh, Newcastle in a very precarious situation uh, in the league. Uh, and I, I, I believe Steve is right in what he's saying that you need someone that's been, who's going to be in the short term, be able to galvanise the whole club, the players, the staff, the, the fans, to get them in, in the right position, in the right frame of mind to go and uh, attack this league and to get out of their situation. Um, then you can start looking at managers uh, in, in a different light because you become a more attractive proposition then. Um, but at this present moment, it, it, it could it could really dent uh, a top manager's uh, uh, credentials if he goes into Newcastle and then they end up getting relegated. Steve, what convinced you to go to Newcastle? Um, the size of the club, 
I always remember having a discussion. I went round to, God rest his soul, Bobby Robson's house. He showed me around. We had chats while I was England manager. And he said, before you, uh, before you finish in football, this is one football club that you must manage. It's a fantastic club, great supporters, um, great history, and, and it's a sleeping giant. He got it to a certain level, couldn't quite go to the next level, and they've never been there since. I think it's a very different football club now. With Mike Ashley for the last 13, 14 years, it's been very, very difficult for the supporters to accept it, even within the football club also and it's just a great a great football club the manager who goes in there has to number one have respect from the crowd he must he must be in there he must right we want him it's a little bit like when benitez went in got a pedigree happy with that he's got to be a strong character but the main thing is he's got to connect with the supporters he's got to have a connection um, a relationship with supporters, be able to go around the town, galvanise everybody and get the team at least heading in the right direction, winning football matches.